We are here uh, at the show, and the first thing that I'm taking a video of is the new Bachman Via Rail New Fleet train. I rode this train last year, and uh, it was quite nice. And it's great to see a model. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be like $2,000 to get the entire train, but it's still the coolest to see. We got some S scale up here too. Oh yeah, I forgot to get an S scale. They've really been expanding their product lines, Ooh. buying out other companies. All right, so Shane, scale trains. Um, first of all, uh, how is it uh, to be back at the show? Well, thank you guys for spending some time with us here at the 2024 Railroad Hobby Show. We're just getting things kicked off this morning, pretty crazy, but hey, that's all right. That's why we're here. Yeah. So, um, Adam, you have any questions? Yeah. So the one thing that I'm wondering is the ES44s. Uh -huh. I noticed they keep getting pushed back. In N scale? Is, yes, N scale. Is that production issues? Are they quality issues? Not ready to comment on that yet. Um, we, are, we have had some challenges with that particular product. We're not ready to share publicly what that is, okay. uh, but uh, we will have something probably within the next couple of months. All right, and I look forward to them. Awesome, thank you. I, I really uh, applaud you guys for your transparency and like quality control and making sure everything's great. Um, Thank you. I, I think that's really important and um, yeah, it's, it's great. Like, do you have anything to comment about like, like just making sure like what's your like standard quality standard? Well, we're always working with the factory uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that we can deliver the highest quality models possible. Last year in April, we had a product development summit in Tennessee and totally, I don't know if you know, but all, a lot of our project managers are from across the country, so we brought them all to Tennessee and totally revamped how we do product development. Totally turned it upside down. And uh, put more checks and balances in the process, both on our side of the house, on the uh, factory side of the house, and uh, it's definitely helped us catch some things that probably would have slipped through in the past, and we're you know, always gonna continue to hone that. So not say we're ever gonna be perfect, but and we're going to strive to be, and if we ever make a mistake, of course, we will, we'll, we'll fix it. All right. That's, yeah. that's the question. Yeah. The, uh, so you got a lot of models in HO, and some of them you've brought to N scale. Do you have plans to bring most, if not all, of what you offer in HO right now to N in the future and the other way around? Uh, some of the models in HO will definitely, that aren't in N will definitely happen. Uh, in fact, here at the show, we'll make two in-scale announcements today okay. uh, for the national convention in uh, June in uh, just outside of Philly. I can't remember. I think it's Bethlehem, Bethlehem yeah. Pennsylvania. Uh, we'll have another HO, oh, I'm sorry, another um, all-new in-scale announcement. And uh, there's quite a bit more in the pipeline for in coming in the next couple of years. So related to that, this is more of like a uh, product development question. What goes into, like, what does it take to take a model from HO and make and turn it into an N scale model. Well, you know, we can start with the CAD that we already have in HO, and that that makes it a lot more simple. But you have to look at it and say, okay, what are the separate parts that when you scale that down into N that are just going to basically disappear? Can you mold those into the end of the model? Uh, of course, the mechanism you can't really scale down. That's that's unique to N. But it gives us a leg up in design for an all new locomotive in HO. You're probably looking at four to six months. For an in-scale locomotive, we can probably sh we can shorten that down to about three or four months, and then it, it definitely makes it a lot more, uh, a lot faster with a freight car. So um, that's one of the reasons that you're going to see quite a few in-scale projects over the next couple of years. All right. Well, thanks for sharing the process. Any more questions? All right, Shane. Thanks for the interview. You're welcome, guys. Uh, thanks so much for dropping by here at the 2024 Railroad Hobby Show. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. One of the finest quality layouts at the show, the Syracuse um, Modular Club. They always hold down this spot and their layout is always looking great. It's a New York Central SW something. Ooh, what is that, a uh, C424? I'm already tired, if you can't tell.
entertaining myself while Adam shops. I'm trying to not like abandon him, but I'm also trying to not go insane looking at a bunch of end scale stuff. So yeah, just kind of walking around. There is a Delaware Lackawanna RS3. There is a Western New York and Pennsylvania 406. I'm not tempted, I'm not tempted, I'm not tempted, I'm not tempted. So this is Aurora Miniatures. Um, tell me like how, you, how your company started and like the process of that, because you're relatively new, right? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Ben Wang. I am the president of Aurora Miniatures North America, Inc. And uh, in 2020, I started this business because I realized that if I wanted really nice model trains for myself, I had to get involved in the manufacturing process. So it's been just over three years, and here we are. We're at our first ever train show in the United States. That's the 2024 Amherst Railway Society Railroad Hobby Show. Thank you. Great to hear. Um, and your your locomotives and freight cars are really well detailed. So are these are these models that you've chosen to um, manufacture? These are like things that you saw a gap or like that you wanted personally. Yeah. So the locomotives are the, all that we're doing right now is the CNS D50F that was just announced this morning. Now, honestly, it's because I am a great CN fan. But we're also considering doing other locomotives of Canadian and American prototypes. And the bot the the rolling stock are just things that I've seen while washing trains in different areas of the, uh, of the continent. So we, we choose the cars that nobody else have done before, or if someone have done it before, but we think there's, there is a market for the better version, and we would, uh, we would pursue these kinds of projects. I mean, these boxcars look great. Some of these look like the brand new ones that I see out, and it's very tempting because I see them IRL, so. Yes, yes. But that's the main reason I wanna make these modern things, because I think there's a big gap in the market for freight cars that's made beyond the 2000s and that's why i'm doing all these all right great to hear hope you enjoy the show it's a great experience um, and hope to see your company grow in the future thank you so much all right so for bowser uh tell me about the c415 first of all well, today at the show, we're showing the, the uh, design features of the C415, and we've 3D printed some of uh, our samples that are on the table so that people could actually hold and see them. Uh, we're going to be advertising them probably in about a month once I get some artwork and some actual SKU numbers, and then we will go into full production, injection molded and sold by English's Model Railroad Supply which is a division of Bowser. So I hope to have that for early next year already to 2025 is there just around the corner. So the other thing we're doing is uh, redesigning the SD40. I had already had samples made in 2018. And of course then the world went on fire for a little while and we're now redesigning and putting uh, step lights in ditch lights, uh, ground lights, deck lights, and the old tooling just would not adapt to the new needed lighting. Other than that, I'm uh, resurrecting the SD40-2 wide cab, and um, there's not a lot of redesign or anything on that. It's just that uh, I finally decided to come out with it, and we're going to make um, more another version of it and have more offerings so i'm getting old but i'm not standing still yet all right well i'm excited for these uh things you have questions adam i do so i don't think it was too long after you announced the rs3ms that the western new york and pennsylvania sold theirs did you have any plans to offer the the RS3M and their, their uh, new owner, the Arcade and Attica? Yes, I would very much want to do that. But it's going to take some time, it's going to take some pictures, and it may even be announced, you no, know, I don't know, summertime. Depends on how my new artist progresses with uh, creating art and everything that we can get done. We've got a lot going in house right now. As you can see, our web page doesn't change a whole lot. And those projects are all coming. So, yeah, 
the simple answer to your question is, if it was painted on RS3, I want to make it. Okay. All right, I look forward to it. We are sort of touching grass, but only to get into more buildings. What's your, what's your honest reaction on the show so far, having seen part of one building? It's pretty big. I found the very cool. It's O-Gage, but it's VTR 432. Atlas always has so much stuff that I want and so many scales. We have Pan Am and PNW Dash 8s, Susquehanna, Conrail, all kinds of stuff I love. GMTX, GNW, so much good stuff. All right, so we're here at Atlas Model Railroad. Can you tell me um, how you guys came to have Z Scale in your lineup? Well, the head of production, R&D, he's an avid Z-Scaler. And he said, you know what? It's time we do branch out and we get into Z-Scale. We started with our true track where we have our Z-Scale trackage. Now we want to do our 53-foot Evans box car. I'm very excited about this release. Definitely looking for a really bright future in Z-Scale as well. That's great to hear. So you're implying that there will likely be more Z-Scale offerings in the future. Oh, yes, definitely. Most definitely. Um, I think I briefly asked this about this yesterday, but um, any chance for locomotives? Well, you know, there's a saying, you know, you can have as many rail cars as you want, but you're going to need something to pull it one day, right? So I can definitely see in the future we can probably branch into locomotives. It's definitely worth the, uh, the look as well. All right, that's very exciting. And between the track and rolling stock and future locomotives um, and seeing atlas you know being my favorite company with all the northeastern prototypes it's great to see so uh excited for this and um uh, i'm a z scale supporter and i appreciate it thanks for stopping by feel free to take a look at the 53 foot evans box car very excited about this release um, definitely get your hands on this from your dealer of your choice you can get it direct from us as well um, but definitely looking for a bright future in z scale This layout is like everything I like to model. Northeastern, 1960s, 1970s. Great stuff. The turbo liner is now an N scale. The turbo liner was the thumbnail of my video last year, and now it's an N scale. Now, I don't usually get excited about rolling stock, but Rapido's Berlin Mills boxcar is an icon of the Northeast. And I don't buy rolling stock new, but I'm very tempted. Pan Am, B&M versions, Guilford, um, St. Lawrence and Atlantic. They look great. Small white box under the table right there. Or a medium white box, rather. Um, look Look, look, look where the cart is. Yeah, there we go, that box. There should, there might be some little rubber. You want to do
Okay, in case y'all didn't know, this is one of the greatest train stations of all time. Point of Rocks, Maryland. Okay, this is a little unofficial meetup. Um, we have Jay. What's up? My name's Jay. We have Adam, who we've been following around. We have uh, Colin and Andrew. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, everyone? We have uh, Jake, who I refer to as Poughkeepsie Boy. Uh, and then we have... Poughkeepsie Boy. And uh, we call him uh, Track Transit Online. Yeah, And uh, that's the crew. Eastern Mass. AP-13, all clear about. MEC 3401? Is that a reference to chasing trains in northern Maine?
But if you know what you're looking at, you'd understand. What? What? Yeah, no, I am. And scale SD40 T-2s, uh, reefer car and end scale, and the last one, oh, HO scale hopper car, and then it should be CSX heritage units. Yep. So a lot of really nice announcements this morning. The GP40s, the reefers. Um, what else was there? Covered hoppers, I saw. Yep. 47A, Covered CSX hoppers. Heritage units. Yep. Heritage units. Virtual um, rail fan at 4.99 a month. Yep. <laughs> um, what a deal! Yeah. Intermarine yeah. convention coming to Chattanooga in 26. All right. And uh, but I wanted to talk about the end scale tunnel motors. Okay. Um, so obviously you guys did the UP, SP, and Rio Grande, probably the biggest three well-known tunnel motors. Yep. Um, do you guys have any plans in the future to offer some of like the smaller? Road names like the Bessemer, some of the G&W railroads, head tunnel motors, Wheeling and Lake Erie. Yeah, this is definitely not the first run. There'll be more road names down the road. All right. So the GP40s, HO1s. Okay. Um, and really, this could go for any model. What lets you, or what, what, how do you decide what road names to do from both the big road names and some of the smaller road names as well? Oh my goodness, that's a that's a, a long answer. <laughs> it, a lot of a lot of factors. Short answer is we try to bring a variety of road names that fit different regions of the country and different eras, so that we can uh, sell to different modelers and uh, not uh, hit the same customer over and over again. Okay. But there's a lot more to it that goes than that. But that's that's kind of at a high level. That's the short answer. Yeah. All right, that works. Bachman's new, very expensive uh, Amtrak. I'm just assuming it's very expensive. Let's get the live reaction on the price. 800 bucks. I thought it was going to be a thousand, but that's still quite steep, considering probably only one of these is a locomotive. I'll film Lionel just so you guys know their gear. I otherwise do not care. They make the goofiest products. I just think they're so goofy. Torpedoes, CP steam locomotive. I think it's a mogul. It's a beautiful cabise. There's a DNH one. These are N scale, so unfortunately useless to me, but very cool. All right, so I'm taking a little break from the chaos and noise, and I'm here with Greg, and we're going to talk about uh, kind of the overall show. So, how are the numbers this year? I heard something about a record turnout. Well, the numbers were really good yesterday. Um, the number that I'm hearing was 15,000 plus. Wow. Yeah, so it was a, a big number yesterday. And we thought with the weather predictions that we might see a pretty significant drop off today. Interestingly, at least from my observation, that has not been the case. We're not quite where we were yesterday, mm -hmm. but it's busy today. So. If I had to make a guess, yeah, I think this is going to be a record year. That's great to hear. And yeah, in the, in the morning it was a little slow, but now it seems as busy as yesterday. Um, so the crowds, you know, likely record year. Um, what about like the floor space, layouts, vendors, manufacturers? Like is that, is there a, more than usual this year? Or? Well, <clears throat> basically we've got four buildings to work with here at Eastern States mm -hmm. uh, Exposition because those are the only four buildings that are winterized. Mm -hmm. And we used every square foot this year, and we still have a waiting list uh, of exhibitors. Wow. So, yeah, we are, we are maxed out uh, on floor space, and I don't see that changing in the foreseeable future. Wow. That's, 
Uh, I guess what you're saying is if I want to bring my Z-Scale layout, I'm better off just carrying it around because there's nowhere. It's it's great. I mean, it's every, I know a couple years ago with COVID, I, there were some more empty spaces towards the back of some buildings, but this year it's it's packed. It's, it's packed. It's great to see. Yeah, you can. You can carry it around or get on the waiting list yeah. because uh, exhibitors do rotate for various reasons. Mm -hmm. So it is possible that... Um, that there will be openings for you so all right well if you guys want to see my z scale layout at the show let me know down in the comments um any other remarks about the show or maybe what we could see in the future well i'll just give you a few observations you know because i spent a little time walking the show this morning and a couple of things really uh, struck me first of all the laser cut wood what people are doing with laser cut wood uh, really blows me away. Mm. Uh, I'm just so impressed with what they're doing. And then second, uh, I would say 3D printing. Yes, I was going to say. 3D printing, it, it amazes me the level of detail and intricacy that people are putting into uh, 3D printing. And then I, I guess the third thing would just be the level of technology. Mm. Uh, I stopped at the Lok Sound booth, and not only do they have a beautiful booth, for one thing, <laughs> mm. but then I just uh, had a chance to see the kinds of things that they're programming and building into their uh, decoders and things. And to, the technology and model railroading is really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed some new manufacturers and new companies simply based around 3D printing. Uh, it's, it's, it's the future. And uh, so, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me here at the show, and, and thanks for talking about, you know, the overall sphere of things, and uh, hope to see you and everyone else next year. Okay, thank you very much. I'm turning in the media passes. It's only 2.30, but I've had long enough a day. I am so tired. And we have tomorrow. So I'm going to be back tomorrow filming some more. Um, we're going to bring Adam to the train station to get his train back home to Buffalo. And, uh, yeah. <laughs>